Welcome, this is TV Papua News of February 2013. Seven Papuans arrested and tortured in Jayapura region. Twelve Indonesian soldiers killed in Punjab Jaya. Major reprisals by Indonesian security forces, thousands of Papuan civilians flee. And Benny Wenda Freedom Tour report. Seven Papuans got arrested and tortured in Taya Jayapura region. On February 15th, Indonesian military arrested seven Papuans in two different situations in De Papri, while looking for independent fighters. The seven Papuans were heavily interrogated and tortured at the police station of Jayapura. The next day, five of the men got released without charges. The two other men, Daniel Gobai and Matan Klembiak, remain in police custody and are, and are reportedly to be charged with possession of a sharp weapon. Allegations of torture are not new in Papua. In 2008, the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture and Other Cruel, Inhumane or Degrading Treatment or Punishment reported that the torture is practiced widely in Papua, as well in the rest of Indonesia. And last year, the Asian Human Rights Committee issued an urgent appeal on acts of torture within the Abepura Correctional Facility, which is based in Jayapura region. But despite, but despite these reports, the international human rights of the international human rights organizations, little have been done by the Indonesian authorities. Military officers who were responsible for torturing a Papua on a video in 2010 were sentenced only to 9 to 12 months imprisonment while the allegations of the torture of Abepua Correctional Facility has never been investigated by the police. So, therefore, MNC International is asking people worldwide to please write Indonesian authorities, asking to ensure the two men are not tortured or ill-treated anymore, to give them medical treatment, access to lawyers of their choosing, and order an effective and independent investigation into the allegations of torture and into ill-treatment by police officers. For more information on this urgent call for action, you can search for the article Two Men Detained, Feared, Tortured in Papua on the website of amnesty.org. Twelve Indonesian soldiers killed in Punjab Jaya. On the 21st of February, twelve Indonesian soldiers got killed in two separate incidents. Four of the dead are claimed to be civilians by the Indonesian media, while TPNOPM claims they were Indonesian soldiers. The shootings were carried out as the Indonesian military continued to build a new military post on a local sacred burial site. The military officers had been repeatedly requested to, do, to stop doing so by both community representatives and the West Papua National Liberation Army, also known as TPNOPM. Their spokesman, Nicolas Tabuni, said, Prior to the incident, TNI had wanted to make a military post in the region of Tingenambut, and the TPOPM, TPN OPM had sent a letter to the TNI asking him not to go ahead with the military post construction in Tingenambut, as that is an area of which the land is formally claimed to be owned by the TPN OPM, and as it is also a sacred area under indigenous customary law of the indigenous community of that area. However, TNI disregarded this request and continued with the construction, and as a result, TPNOPM carried out the shooting on the 21st of February to assert West Papuan sovereignty against Indonesian colonial, colonial occupation. I'm sorry. The chief of the police in the area said that the bodies of the victims, the soldiers and the claimed civilians will be moved and a team will be set up in coordination with the army to investigate the killings. Furthermore, he said that the security forces in the area will be strengthened. Major reprisals by Indonesian security forces and thousands of Papuan civilians flee. After the killing of Indonesian soldiers, the local communities around Sinak, Kurage, Mulia and Tingenambut in the Punjab Jaya region, Regency have been victim of reprisals of the Indonesian army. At least a thousand members of various Indonesian security forces are currently occupying entire communities around Punjab Jaya. 
with even thousands more, thousands more troops being sent in from other centers in Papua. The villages are being occupied since February 24th, with villagers being forced even to give all their food and houses to the soldiers, and being subject to really harsh interrogations. Security forces began to carry out house-to-house -house sweeping operations on February 26th. And since then, different sources say that at least 18 houses have been burned down to the ground, five churches have been razed, two schools and a library have been destroyed. While witnesses have also reported that soldiers are deliberately burning and destroying food gardens and shooting livestock, which give reason to fear for a major humanitarian disaster unfolding. Already thousands of people from the surrounding villages have fled to the high mountains. Exact numbers are not currently known, but local sources indicate that several thousand people, mainly subsistence farmers, live in the area. Benny Wenda Freedom Tour Report On Benny Wenda's first Freedom Tour he visited the USA, New Zealand, Australia and is ending his tour visiting different countries in Melanesia. He started his Freedom Tour in the USA, where he met with politicians like New York State Senator Bill Perkins, US Samoa Congressman N.I. Faleo Mavega, members of the State Department and the US Senate Committee for Foreign Affairs. He held in he interviews with the press, like with Free Speech Radio News. He met with Herman Wangai, also a Papuan living in exile. And he also met with other activists and activist, pl activist platforms. He continued his tour in New Zealand, where, was, where his request to speak in the New Zealand Parliament led to political unrest among different political parties. Parliament's new speaker is likely to come under fire tomorrow as questions intensify about why he's blocked a human rights campaigner from speaking. David Carter says it's not appropriate for West Papuan freedom fighter Benny Wender to hold a public forum at Parliament, but is giving no further explanation. Brooke Saban reports. Benny Wender never thought he'd make it to New Zealand. He sat down to tell us why, but first a traditional greeting. Wah, 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 it's like Kiora. Then a song. He wrote this in prison after being arrested by Indonesian forces for promoting the independence of West Papua. Because Indonesia committed genocide uh, in, toward my people. Ten years ago, Wenda escaped prison, then fled to the UK, where he was granted political asylum. Since then, he's spoken at parliaments around the world. But Speaker David Carter blocked a public function to be held at our parliament tomorrow. The Greens say the government doesn't want to upset Indonesia. Have you ever been blocked? from a parliament around the world? No, this is the first time in New Zealand Parliament. First time. I don't understand it. This is the people's house. Uh, people like that should be able to come and speak in the grounds of our parliament. Wenda's biggest supporter is Jennifer Robinson, who happens to be legal advisor to Julian Assange. She's also just arrived in the country and is outraged. And I tell you, this sort of censorship, I thought that only happened in West Papua, not in New Zealand. Wenders even met British Prime Minister David Cameron, so we asked John Key why he's been blocked here. We get, need to go and ask David Carter. So we asked the Speaker again, and he refused to front again. So Wenders off to Wellington tomorrow, and he's decided that if he can't speak at Parliament, he'll at least show up to question time to watch from the public gallery. He's likely to see the opposition grill the government about why they've blocked him. The Speaker's attempt to shut Wender down has clearly backfired. He's now getting much more publicity. Brooke Sabin, 3 News. The Foreign Affairs Minister played a part in blocking West Papuan freedom fighter Benny Wender from speaking at Parliament. Murray McCulley admitted he didn't want a national MP supporting the event, but opposition parties say the government's afraid of upsetting Indonesia. Brooke Sabin reports. A defiant Benny Wender on the steps of Parliament. Freedom. Freedom. But the government clearly sees Wender, his hat and his ukulele, as a risk. The Speaker blocked him from holding a public speech in this room. So this is the people's house. We should be allowed to have people speaking here. And particularly Mr Wender, who's been speaking in parliaments right across the world. Labour, the Greens and Mana applied to hold the function. But today it emerged a National Party MP wanted to co-host it as well. 
The Foreign Affairs Minister soon put a stop to that. The short answer from me is that we would not favour that. So in the end, Wender had to make his speech across the road from Parliament, alleging genocide by the Indonesians. Now time for world to look at this situation. The Indonesian ambassador hit back. From our point of view, he is a criminal. All the while the Greens continued the attack in the House, not that McCulley cared. The member can invite anyone she wants to, to her office or to her caucus room, to speak about anything they like. Opposition parties say the government is simply trying to avoid upsetting Indonesia, a billion dollar trading partner. Their Prime Minister may visit later in the year, and he's sure to get inside Parliament. Brooke Sabin, 3 News. In Australia, Benny Wenda discussed the freedom struggle of West Papua with the Green Party spokesman, Senator Di Natale, and Labour Party member MP, Laura Ferguson. He visited the Apology Centre at the fifth anniversary of the government's apology to the Melanesian Aboriginals. He met with the Australian Papua community and Aboriginal elder, Uncle Kevin Busakot. The ABC hold an interview with Benny Wenda on the evening news. In the Indonesian province of West Papua, the military says it's again come under fire from suspected separatist gunmen while trying to retrieve the bodies of seven soldiers killed in fighting yesterday. Indonesian military sources say its helicopter was forced away from the area without being able to pick up the soldiers' bodies due to incoming fire. The deaths are being blamed on the separatist Free Papua movement. The renewed violence comes as one of West Papua's leading campaigners for independence from Indonesia is visiting these shores. Benny Wenda is a tribal leader who was granted political asylum by the British government 10 years ago following his escape from custody while on trial in West Papua. Since then he's travelled the world becoming familiar to his audiences for his distinctive tribal headwear and his ukulele as he sings songs about the plight of his homeland. He brought both with him when I spoke to Benny Wenda a little earlier from our Perth studio. I began by asking him What's brought West Papua to the current situation where deaths are taking place? The West Papuan are fighting for independence from Indonesian colonialism back to 1960 until today. They are fighting the very last 50 years. And there's, uh, West Papua is a heavily mit militarized zone. The military always go to the villages and beating the people and killing the people. That's always trying to justify Indonesia's presence in West Papua. Can I just return now to your visit to Australia? Can I, can I ask you, how hard is it to get the international community to focus on what's going on in West Papua? And in asking you that, I, I guess I've just got to acknowledge the way that you have taken your music and your traditional dress around the world in your effort to, to highlight the plight of West Papuans. Yes, West Papua is a cry for freedom last 50 years and we're trying to um, tell the world but because there is no journalists allowed to West Papua since Indonesia occupied 1963. Until today, journalists are banned, rest cross are banned, amnesty are banned, even um, all the NGO are banned. Very difficult to get the message out. So that's why I'm, this is first tour now I'm here in, in Australia. Um, so the, why I put a headdress and the guitar, this is the, our identity, this is our culture. Um, so you cannot do this in, in uh, trying to perform or express yourself in West Papua. We are just use this as uh, a uh, zoo. We are a uh, zoo, attra tourist attraction. But I'm now here because I want to show that this is who we are. This is what we are fighting for, our freedom. What would you like Australia and other governments uh, to do about the situation in your homeland? Uh, First, I know that Australia had the obligation to support West Papua because uh, Second World War II, my, my ancestors were uh, helped the Australian military when the, uh, the Pacific War. That's why I'm here, bring the cry for my people to help because Australia is our big brother in 500 kilometers on top of, uh, north of Queensland. So that's why very important because second, the Australian people are supporting East Timor uh, back to 10 years ago. That is the, that's why I'm here. Uh, same military are operating uh, committed genocide in West Papua. That's why I really need support. And the government level, I hope that the government could put pressure on Indonesia government to allow journalists visit West Papua uh, as well as uh, some kind of independence um, 
uh, investigate and visit West Papua. Also, UN uh, mission to visit West Papua, that's what we our demand, simple demands. Uh, we really need support. Your own story that you've been taking around the world, of course, is a very powerful one. You, you uh, grew up seeing your, your aunts raped by Indonesian soldiers. You hid in the jungle for years. You've been inside an Indonesian prison. You've witnessed a lot of the atrocities that have taken place in West Papua. Can I, can I ask you how you express that sort of pain and, and trauma that you've experienced for the world community to try and bring home your message? Yeah, I think this is why I'm fighting this struggle because I have been through, the, even I'm a victim, so that's why I'm fighting this for free my people. And I don't know the other people, but people who are living under their oppressor, it's very difficult, really difficult. Um, the, um, this is not only happened to me, but every Papuan, they can tell own story. And because 250 tribe, we have been through this uh, experience. Um, so that's why I'm, I just travel into around the world to tell what really happened, what really gone, why West Papua want to independent from Indonesia. So that is very, very important for me to bring the, our my people voice for cry for freedom around the world. Okay, you've offered to play for us, Benny Wender. Could we hear a little bit of your music, please? Yeah, this song that I composed when I was locked up Indonesian military, uh, police in Jayapura. So I was um, with the chains and two weeks handcuffed. So I composed this song when I was in dark room full of toilets. I want to sing in this song as a cry for freedom. Some of the haunting sounds there of West Papua from independence leader Benny, Benny Wender, who is visiting Australia at the moment. And at the moment, Benny Wender is continuing the Malaysian part of his tour, visiting Papua New Guinea. And later, also going to Vanuatu and Solomon Islands, where he will end his first international freedom tour. This was TV Papua News of February 2013. And especially in these violent times, we hope to see all of you again for the next month's news episode. For now, thank you for watching.